welcome to my channel i'm jules okay so this was a really highly requested video you guys wanted me to translate last week's video to english so that you could share with different people you may know so i've really tried to stay as close as possible to my video in spanish nearly word for word but mainly just to get the same concept across the same message okay so today i'm going to be talking about 10 things i learned in el salvador and what Salvadoreños are like in their essence. If you guys were to visit El Salvador, maybe some things you would notice about people in El Salvador. Sometimes I may refer as like Salvadoreños and other times I might say we, but mainly that's because even though maybe I don't look like I'm Salvadoreña, I was raised in El Salvador. So basically from the age of five to now, I've spent most of my time in El Salvador and I feel like I identify most with culture there even though I wasn't born there I go back and forth but you guys get it you guys get the concept of the video the first thing is that salvadoreños are very hard working salvadorans are really good at finding a way under hard circumstances I think that salvadorans can do anything and if they don't know to do it they won't hesitate to learn we don't have a lot of mind blocks in El Salvador when it comes to work so as far as work goes if you know you have personal problems at home or in your family or in your relationships. We're really good at setting those things aside and really doing the job that's at hand. I think also another really great thing besides the fact that Salvadoreños are just really good at learning new things when it comes, especially when it comes to work is that we're not afraid of getting our hands dirty. So I, I know maybe I'm 22, right? But I've done a lot of jobs and I've worked in different little odd jobs here and there. And what I can say is, you know, most of them I would have to walk to work just because obviously I don't live in the States. Like I didn't, I didn't have a car and my family members cars, you know, here in the States you have to have insurance and it's just, it's a whole deal. I didn't like inconven inconveniencing people. They would be really surprised that I would do something like that. You know, why are you walking in the sun like during summertime, an hour to work? You know, I would get there all sweaty. <laughs> And my coworkers were like, when they found out what I was doing, they were just so shocked. And I guess in my mind, it's like, well, you know, what else do you do? If you have a job, a solid job, and it's an hour away and you have to walk, like, that's what you do you get you get it done right and to them it was just like wow like she's really putting an effort but i guess to me and i think to most salvadoreños it's just what you do you can kind of tell when someone is willing to work hard just for money whereas when someone is works hard no matter what the pay is or no matter you know what the job is and that's most salvadoreños that's what i can say the second one is that salvadoreños are very friendly and warm they receive their guests with a lot of warmth and care and just have overall good manners when it comes to guests they are also very proud of their homes and their family so if i were to go to a friend's house you can be sure i'm going to meet her whole family and her pets everyone la abuelita like her tias eventually you meet the whole family imagine that if they're like this at home they're also just like this as a nation as a general culture and to say you know with foreigners and i i've traveled around a bit right so i've gone to different cultures different countries i'm not going to say like i've been all over the world but i've been to several countries and even just talking with my own family like my parents and other siblings who have traveled to even more countries than maybe i have el salvador really stands out in the fact and just the way that they are just so welcoming and they're really really friendly and i don't want to try to say that other cultures aren't friendly however you'll notice that most cultures you tend to have to develop some some kind of friendship or you know talk to someone for a little bit for them to open up and like be warm but in el salvador you could be a complete stranger uh, like i haven't seen you a day in my life and there are thousands and tons of salvadoreños that would be more than happy to treat you like their own family and it's it's crazy it really is very impacting the way that we receive people in el salvador we're not we don't discriminate the third one is one i like a lot and it is que somos un desmadre and this is to say i 
there's no real translation for this word, but under this context, it's to say that we're just a lot of fun. There are no bad celebrations with salvadoreños. It doesn't matter where it's at, it could be a hole in the wall, but there's going to be a good environment, there's gonna be delicious food, and a lot of, most likely a lot of music. And where there's music, there's usually dancing. We love dancing in El Salvador. There are some people who don't, and usually, you know, even at celebrations or weddings, people who don't, maybe don't enjoy dancing will really enjoy watching other people dance and maybe even laugh at them, like in a good sense but it's just a very contagious environment. I don't really go out like every weekend or anything, but when it comes to celebrations or like weddings or a birthday or, you know, you can expect me to want to go, like go to the dance floor to dance. If it's karaoke, I'll sing, you know, I'll pretend like I can sing. <laughs> It's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it and even people who don't enjoy dancing, like I said, they enjoy the environment and, the, and just the music, you know. A really good example and a time you guys could really notice this is definitely during the holidays in El Salvador. Christmas is celebrated on the 24th at midnight pretty much and most homes like they'll have, like I said, you know, really good food, a good environment. We don't even care so much for the presents as we do the environment, spending time with family and friends, that's really the highlight of the holidays. So the fourth one, and I actually kind of think this one is funny, but it's really true. And it's that no one goes hungry in El Salvador. So, las mujeres salvadoreñas, you know, women in El Salvador, will not let you go hungry. This could be your mom, your friend's mom, your aunt, your abuelita, your grandma. <laughs> Um, it could be your neighbor, like it might be a neighbor that doesn't even know you. If they know that you're hungry, they will not hesitate to give you food. A lot of times they'll also like, I can't even explain how many times this happens. You know, they'll be like, I get petita or like whatever. They always want you to be like well fed and they'll give you like, they'll give you huge portions, right? It's a really, really sweet thing about women in El Salvador. And I don't want to say it's just women, but that's kind of, that's where you really see it most in El Salvador. Like if you were to visit, that's probably something you would notice really quick. In El Salvador, you're not on a diet. Like if you tell someone you're on a diet, they, they won't even care, <laughs> you know? They'll serve you anyways. They'll give you whatever it is they make, or it could be like fried in oil, like no way. Like cero dietas, you're, you're gonna eat. Another like really nice aspect, especially Especially moms who are willing to to eat less or to serve themselves less or maybe even sometimes not eat just so that all their kids or their whole family their household all have full bellies and all eat well and that's something I really respect and admire a lot and um, most like Salvadoran households they'll definitely give you you know whatever it is they have like sometimes you know they may not have a lot but they'll give you from what they what they do have and extend themselves at some points so the fifth one is that salvadoreños won't leave you hanging and this is to say obviously you know if they can help you out they will for the most part whether you're a stranger whether you're someone they know if they can help you they will and we just have this mentality that at some point we all need someone to just to say you know the circumstance that you could be going through could easily be me or it could easily be someone close to me so if i can help you i will in el salvador you're definitely never going to get stuck on the side of the road without any wanting to, anyone wanting to give you a hand or without money for public transportation or just lost without directions without someone genuinely caring and stopping to help you okay so number six is that in el salvador you learn to be more vivo vivo is alive it literally means alive but the way i'm using it under the context i'm using it is basically to say that you, you learn to be quick-witted or sharp. Salvadoreños, for lack of probably a better term, I would describe as very business-minded. Most um, Salvadoreños will use this in a very honest way, and actually I would dare to say that sometimes they even charge just too little for the work they put into the, into the different things they may sell, maybe their small business, Maybe it's things they, you know, they might sell on the streets, but it's honest work and really, really Salvadoreños can make a business out of anything. They can sell you anything. However, 
on the flip side, there are those few, <laughs> that small percentage, that do take advantage of the fact that they're quick-witted. <laughs> It's possible you might encounter, you know, alguien que te quiere bajar or like someone who wants to take advantage. But if you're hang if you're hanging with a salvadoreño and you know someone there that you can trust, trust like it's not going to happen to you. Like no one's going to be taking advantage of you. No one's going to be scamming you because I I personally believe that all salvadoreños have like this sixth sense when someone has bad intentions or when someone wants to take advantage of them or when it's a scam. We're really, really good at identifying those things. It's something that at some point we've all dealt with. So we're really good at managing those kinds of situations and we will make sure that not only us, but you know, the people close to us don't get taken advantage of. And yeah, so we're not like, we don't leave our doors unlocked in El Salvador. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you just can't trust everyone. You can be nice to everyone. You can be friendly to everyone, but you, you don't trust someone that easily, right? So the seventh one is that in El Salvador, we don't waste. And this one, obviously, it kind of explains itself, but <laughs> to sum it all up, if we're served a plate of food, we generally, you know, we'll do our best to eat it all. And no matter what we're served, even if it's something we don't like too much, we'll, we'll eat it unless we're allergic to it. Or, you know, it, it would have to be a really, really extreme scenario for us not to eat something, even if we don't like it. I think it's just a really good habit because if you go to someone's home, you know, whoever's home it is, and they've really taken, um, they've really taken the time to prepare a meal, the least you can do is just enjoy it and, eat it all, right? For some reason, you know, we, we're full, we can't eat it all, we'll definitely take it home and just try and make sure that it doesn't go to waste. This also applies with things, so if there's any use, any possible use we can give to things, we definitely will. <laughs> if someone can't use something, they'll just give it away to someone who will use it or who can use it. The so number eight is that we learn to smile in difficult times or under difficult circumstances and some of the ways you can notice this in uh, the culture in El Salvador if you were to have you know a casual small talk with a salvadoreño and you're to and you were to ask them you know how are you doing like they're always always going to say that they're doing good they could just have a terrible circumstance you know at home or whatever their life could be in a million pieces but they won't say that they won't just say that up front and usually if it's a friend and you know you can kind of tell something's going on you might just want to ask them directly and even still you might have to insist a little for someone to open up in that way we're really good at putting on a good face at having a good attitude despite whatever's going on in the background and sometimes we'll even laugh about it <laughs> so it's it's it may sound bad that might sound i don't know that might sound bad, but it's kind of like a coping mechanism. Like when things get really bad and you've already done everything you can, you've already felt as bad as you can. And then all there's really left to do is to laugh. So we do laugh a lot at our problems or we just, we try to find a positive uh, way to look at it and not let it defeat us or overcome us. So that's a really cool thing. That's something I felt like I've learned a lot in El Salvador. Number nine is that we really, really enjoy the small things in life. In El Salvador, we don't need a lot to feel at peace or to feel content. Really, the most important things are, you know, having your seres queridos, like the people you love around you, having a roof over your head, having food on the table, and everything else is kind of extra. I don't feel like I need the latest phone, the latest technology, or trends in clothing to feel like to feel satisfied here you could easily just go out and have like a $20 phone and no one's really gonna look down on you for it just those are just additional things and I feel like all of us would rather help some you know maybe a family member in the hospital than buy ourselves a new phone on the flip side we get really really happy and excited at the smallest things and some of the something I think about, and actually it's something that if you were to go to El Salvador, you might see it a lot, like depending where you go. Playing soccer out on the street, even if the ball's like toda deseta, the ball's like destroyed and doesn't have a lot of air in it, and it probably is gonna really hurt if they 
if it hits you because when a soccer ball doesn't have air it hurts it is a painful experience but we enjoy it anyway just have fun with it the typical foods in el salvador me encanta like i love them and it could be something off the street that costs only like 50 cents and it'll just make me so happy the mango twist or something i really can't even go too long without some of the salvador like some salvadoran food i i start <laughs> to really crave it. Number 10, and this is the last one, is that in El Salvador, we you learn to have fun with little or nothing. So just to put this into context, when I came to the, I came to live to the States for six months, you know, when I come here and I feel like that culture shock, I guess, that's how I even notice these things because when you're living in El Salvador, you don't even notice these things until you go outside. And obviously every country has their pros or like their, their positive aspects. But one of the things I noticed in the States, one of the things that kind of hit me the most when I got here, I was working and studying and my goal personally was to save up. You know, I was being really frugal and I was just trying to save my money. And I remember after my classes, like several times getting invited by like a guy or, or just like a group of potential friends. Afterwards, they would be like, hey, so like, w do you want to go get a drink or we're all going to go to this restaurant? Would you like to come? I don't want to say this is a bad thing because it really isn't bad. You know, most people in the, in the United States, you can afford going out with friends or family unless you're like trying to save up like I was. A lot of relationships to me, like from what I could tell, we're building off of the fact that we'll go out every so often. I remember just this thought coming to my head <laughs> and I just kept thinking like friendships here in the States or just like relationships are so expensive. And that was just like this huge thought in my head because to me, I don't know, but like $20 is a big deal, right? I know I might be cheap, but like that that's the way I think. And I know this probably sounds really terrible, but try and follow me. <laughs> I My mindset was I want to save money. I have these projects in mind. I have these things in mind. In El Salvador, you really don't need those kind of things. We're all pretty much used to the fact that sometimes you don't have money. I I could easily, in El Salvador, say if someone were to come, approach me with the same idea, I could easily tell them, hey, you know, actually I don't have money. I would love to go out with you and probably offer an alternative of something we could do that doesn't require much. And I feel like maybe in the States, people wouldn't go like they wouldn't be down for that you know in el salvador i've gone to like a park with a friend and we'll just eat you know plain bread and to us yeah i mean we don't even like it it doesn't even taste good right the bread like bread alone it, it wasn't like a delicious food or anything but it did the job like we weren't hungry and you got to spend time with someone you really care about and that's probably the most important aspect when it comes to you know, friendships it really isn't about we need to go out and like spend money it's just about real connections you have money they'll be like hey you know what i'll invite you and like we'll share a plate <laughs> or next time i'll share a plate my plate with them and it's just a really common normal thing and we really understand just that concept of you know what, like I really want to spend time with you, but I don't have money and somehow we make it work. And actually some of my great, like my most treasured memories are with people I really loved where we just went, you know, wherever and had so much fun. But yeah, Salvadoreños will be down 100% to go with you and maybe eat something that they don't even enjoy, <laughs> that they don't even like if it means spending time with you if you're if you're their friend. Just those those outings where it doesn't really matter where you're going, what you're doing, and it's all about who you're with. These are 10 things I really really love about El Salvador and I've learned and I'm continually learning okay so that's gonna be it for me if you guys got to this point in the video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you're salvadoreño maybe you can comment something which one of these you relate to personally the most in your own life and if you're not you could also say something that you really like about el salvador or the culture or something you may have noticed and just add to the conversation 
with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video and just in general for your support and i will see you guys next time bye